In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a GitHub action using a Docker container. And to better explain this, I'm gonna use a real life example for one of my projects and how I leverage GitHub actions to assist first time contributors uh, with good first issues. Uh, I'm a big fan of providing all the context needed for anybody to contribute to my project, regardless of how much experience the potential contributor has. Within this issue, I've included some detailed instructions on how to take this contribution to, I guess, the next level. This includes reviewing the contributing MD. Uh, the other thing I wanna point out is the fact that uh, everybody is able to assign themselves to issues before they start working on it. The problem here is that anybody who's not a part of the org cannot assign themselves to issues. And uh, the way I solved this is one, explaining this in the contributing MD that you should assign yourself to issues. But two is through a simple GitHub action using a, a bash script. So when users type in the command in the issue comments dot take, they are assigned to the issue. And I find this ideal uh, for my project workflow because I find there's a number of first time contributors who, and they'll find that these issues are already a work in progress. Uh, this is challenging and deflating for first time contributors. And I want to make sure that everybody has a, a great first time experience. So I think the best way to show this off is I'm just gonna go ahead and write dot take, um, which you'll see triggers my action, which is now completed. And you can see that my account, not be Dougie, is actually assigned to the issue. So I wanted to point out that if you are interested in learning how to do this hands-on uh, tour tutorial, uh, you can always go over to lab.github.com and check out how to create an action using a Docker container uh, in that lab course. It's a free course. It actually helps you create a repo as well as create the action uh, through a step-by-step -step tutorial as well. So definitely check that out. So let's go step-by-step -step and show you how to build this yourself. So in order to create an action, I'm gonna create a new repo. Uh, and this repo will be a place where I will add a Docker image. And this Docker image will point to a little bit of bash and this bash will assign an individual to an issue. So while creating the repo, it's important to initialize it with a readme. Uh, this is my personal preference because I'm gonna be doing all this through the web UI and adding a readme and blocks me from needing to create this repo from the command line. I guess it's like a little, little GitHub hack for myself. To start off, we'll need a Docker file to leverage the Docker image that we'll be using to run the bash script. So I'll put some Docker stuff here and then explain what, what we are working with. So a lot of this is gonna be very Docker specific stuff. Uh, and it's actually not important to commit this to memory, but it'll be helpful to understand how all of this works. So here on the first line, we've got this Alpine image. Uh, Alpine is a minimal Docker image based on Alpine Linux, which is a complete package uh, index and only is five megabytes in size. So that's a, a great size for a Docker image. Doesn't take a ton of space. It also gives us an environment and includes command line utilities, things like Git and image magic, none of which we're gonna actually use for this um, tutorial. But in the, in the event that I, we want to expand and use some other stuff, we will have it all at our fingertips to, to leverage. But the biggest reason for grabbing this Docker image is because we wanna run some bash. Uh, this bash is gonna be pretty simple. It's not gonna be a ton of lines of bash, uh, but it's gonna give us the ability to leverage our GitHub repo instead of the command line to perform this action. I'm also gonna install uh, JQ, which is it gives us the ability to do some basic filtering uh, from the JSON response that is returned in the action. I highly recommend checking out this GitHub page uh, to learn about more details on how JQ provides uh, filtering response data. Uh, I will leave a link in the description below. Finally, we're going to identify our entry point SH as our entry. Um, this is where our batch code is going to live. So I'm going to go ahead and commit this to the main branch and we'll move on to there. Now, as you saw before, we needed to create that entry point. So this is it. Uh, the structure is going to require us to make sure that this is executable, uh, which I'll show you uh, how to do that from the command line. And for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to copy and paste the bash and then I'll explain it through. Uh, before I run through the contents of the file, I just want to explain executable and what that means. Uh, it basically just means I can run this from the command line uh, just using the file path. It's helpful for easy scripting. Um, there are other languages that we could have written this in to make executables like example go. And for the sake of explanation and the fact that I already had this code written out in bash, uh, we're going to stick with bash today. 
So GitHub recommends that actions use environment variables to access file systems rather than using hard-coded paths. Uh, GitHub sets up these variables for your actions to use in the runner environments, uh, which is what, what powers GitHub Actions. And in this file, I'm identifying my variables by leveraging the GitHub event path. That is the path that points to the action event that just ran. Uh, so this is provided free, again, in our action runner environment. Uh, you can also see here in my script that I'm using JQ to filter the JSON response uh, using the shorthand. Uh, and that's what's setting our, our variables. So now we'll go moving down to the conditional. We can see that the conditional is seeing if the body includes the dot command uh, take. And if that is the case, we're going to go ahead and move forward and announce the fact that we're assigning the issue to the, the user that logged in or the commenter or the person who created the comment. And we're going to leverage our GitHub token, uh, also provided by the environments. Uh, the runner environment. Uh, and finally, we're going to do a bit of curl uh, and want to point that directly to back to the issue and use our environment variables, variables to assign the commenter to the issue. Now, I want to point out that the GitHub token is limited in scope. Uh, this might be one of the biggest places people sort of fall over when messing around with GitHub Actions. Uh, and it's limited in scope for security reasons. So keep in mind, there are very few write and post actions uh, where you can actually manipulate data on GitHub. It does give you a lot of access to stuff, but it's also, it prevents you from a lot of access. So the workaround is actually, instead of using the provided GitHub token, to use your own token and provide that as an environment variable if you want to do more uh, destructive or um, mutations to, to your repositories or other parts of your code base. I would actually like to do a video on this uh, GitHub token soon. So if you'd like to see that, leave a comment below and that will give me uh, an idea of what you're looking for. And that is it, just 12 lines of code uh, and it will solve our goal of assigning issues uh, or at least having other people assign issues to themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and clone this repo and test it out and run it locally. Cause I think it's a good idea to debug it, debug this and make sure that it actually works. Actions does not have a debugging environment out of the box, uh, but there are ways to get that experience locally. So in order to run this as an intended executable, uh, we'll need to run the shamad plus command, which means it actually can run as a bash script uh, using the file name. So one of the benefits of the Docker container is that I don't have to do this in my repo. I can also run this exactly the same way from the command line. Um, because this local environment is not GitHub, I created a mock JSON response. Uh, this is what I've saved as an event.json file. It's uh, similar to the, the path that the GitHub event path token provides. This JSON only includes the elements I needed to set the environment variables in my bash script. And it will just give me a, a pseudo live environment experience uh, just so I can see this working. I also wanna point out one more time exactly how we're using JQ to traverse this mock data here. One other thing before I run this, I wanna point out that this GitHub token is something that I did not have available locally. I went ahead and created the PIT uh, or a PAT in the developer console on GitHub, which you can do so yourself too, as if, if you need to test this locally. Uh, you can find this in developer profile settings and uh, you'll need to create a token that has repo admin access uh, so you can assign folks as well. So remember, you only need this for testing. So if you aren't testing this locally, you don't need to create a GitHub token to test your action in the browser. So I went ahead and unassigned myself from the original issue that we were looking at. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this again as an executable uh, using the file name. I've also passed in the local environment variables to GitHub token and the GitHub event path to make sure that this runs properly. And now you can see I got a response back from my action and it looks like it actually worked. So now that I've confirmed that it works, I'm gonna add this to my workflows file in the repo. I also wanna point out, since I've had this action already created in production, uh, I have been leveraging a slightly different spelling this entire time in the tutorial. Uh, I do have this version here, which I'm gonna to add to the workflows file, um, which you're more than welcome to leverage yourself. Uh, you could also fork the action. So if you want this action to be on your domain or your organization, you can also do that too. That's the power of actions, the fact that it's open source and anybody can see this code, whatever they want. 
Now I'm going to point directly to my main branch, uh, but there are ways to point it to a commit SHA or a release tag, uh, which I'll show in a future video. And as a reminder, you can go to lab.github.com and do this whole tutorial yourself. You're going to create a completely different action, uh, but it will add extra features like using inputs and leveraging different environment variables to, to manage data for your action. So definitely check out this course. So that's all I have today. Hopefully you've successfully got action traction.